Wait, let's go in live. You're live. What up, guys? My name is Eric. I'm JT. This is Racing Ram Fam, and we love to turbo dodge Rams. And we're going to be talking about our turbo dodge Rams because the EPA is trying to shut us down from modifying our vehicles and making them into race cars. So what we're going to talk about today is the RPM Act to protect our race cars, to protect Whitey, to protect Venom, the Turbo Beast race cars that are factory production cars that we modified, we built motors for, we've modified them to go racing with them, to go have fun with them. So the EPA pretty much is trying to uh, destroy race cars and emission systems because they want emission systems intact. And a lot of time for racing, you guys modify those emission systems to go faster, like putting on superchargers, turbos, uh, adding more fuel, you know, making more horsepower. Exactly. A lot of times they say that is hurting the environment when we do it. So they are trying to make it so it's pretty much impossible to go racing because they'll make it so any factory production car, we cannot modify to go racing. That's why 90% of stuff when you go buy like off website, like turbo supercharger systems, you have to actually, it says on there for off-road or uh, non on-road use. So you have to actually use it off-road and they're getting mad because we're using it on-road. So they're going to shut off both of it. They're going to keep it from going on the road and they're going to keep it from going on the strip or drifting or whatever you want to do. Yeah. They're all getting mad because the, these race cars, even just these slightly modified vehicles that are driven on the streets every day, just because they don't meet emission standards of, I think it's just California, then they want it all over the United States. They're trying to get rid of everything engine modification possible. They don't want you to modify your engine in the slightest anymore. So a lot of it that I was reading is them talking about diesels. A lot of it is they don't roll coal thing is that's what diesels like. They don't like that. Uh, I read an article where they compared one modified Dodge Ram uh, 3500 diesel Cummins uh, that was just as bad as 10 uh, TDI Volkswagens. And the issue I have with that is the TDI is like a 1.6 liter and a Cummins in that generation truck is a 5.9. So first of all, it's like three times the displacement size. So it's going to put out three times more exhaust. And then they're comparing a truck from the 90s to a truck from or a car from like 2018 on. Oh, yeah, it was like for, 2014 is when they first started these uh, high emissions Volkswagens and whatever. But so you're comparing yeah. a car from 2014 to a truck from 99. Exactly. Uh, when there was barely any emissions compared to now where they are fully intact. We got depth systems. We have EGR, we have tons of. There's all sorts of systems. those different things. And then there's also the uh, the trucks, they have those bigger engines. They're going to be hauling stuff. They're going to be pulling stuff. They're going to be in use. They're not They're not these. Volkswagens. They're not these Volkswagen cars. cars. Yes, exactly. Like for some people, maybe they will be commuter cars. They might be uh, driving from A to B. They just want a diesel truck. Fine, whatever. But a lot of these bigger Cummins diesel engines, they're used to haul big loads of whatever and you can't compare that <laughs> <laughs> but, guys, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah guys so the rpm act is pretty much an act that protects motorsports from what it is it allows uh manufacturers allows aftermarket companies to install aftermarket parts on vehicles to modify emission systems uh sema put it out so uh definitely go check that out on sema's website and they make it super easy to contact your congress and say we want the rpm act we do not want the epa to downgrade on our vehicles so make sure you guys go over to sema and hit that up and get on that because we just need to keep modifying yes we our trucks and cars and going faster like, this is a culture this is not just something. this is america baby we need yeah. freedom america freedom 100 percent yeah, if you just searched R search RPM Act in Google, I think it's the very first link that comes up with uh, the SEMA website. It tells you all, all about the RPM Act, explains everything on there, and they have a link on there that you can click on and go to submit your vote to make sure this SEMA Act gets put into place. We don't want to we don't want to see the race cars die. We don't want to see the racing community die. So the other thing is, I qu quoted from. Uh, 
There's a website blog.ucsusa.org that was talking about, they were actually uh, against the RPM Act that I was reading about. They're also the ones that were comparing the one old Dodge diesel versus the 10 brand new Volkswagen TDIs. And they said, this is quote straight from their website. SEMA is not interested in air quality or public health or whether the RPM Act restricts EPA's ability to do its job. SEMA is simply interested in making it easier for its members to make money. How do we know this? Because the RPM Act is not designed to solve the problem that SEMA claims exists. So pretty much they're saying is SEMA's this evil person that's trying to destroy the world and stuff. They're like making SEMA seem like an uh, evil villain. And it's like they're not. Like SEMA is a place that uh, aftermarket car manufacturer parts can go and show off their parts. Like I don't get like bigger rims or like aftermarket rims are killing the environment or suspension, suspension systems or... or hose clamps. Like I don't get that because SEMA is so open to like so many different it's, things. Tools, like you have tools at SEMA's, you've got all these different parts. Like they sit there and act like the cleanly cleanliness of the air is going to be impacted from SEMA. So what do you guys think about this whole thing? I see a lot of people's comments. We'll go through and read some people's comments right now and see what you think. But comment down below. Let us know what you guys think about this, what EPA is trying to do. And definitely go check out that RPM Act. Again, go to SEMA's website and go fill that out and tell your congressmen, Congress people that RPM Act is here to stay and you cannot take our race cars away. It's a community where, where people go to SEMA from, isn't it all over the world? Oh yeah, but they're just coming. even the car culture in general. Yeah, it's, it's like they're trying to come at modifying vehicles and we have everything. such a car culture behind it. like. And they're, they're trying to make every, everything. When are we supposed to go modified? drag racing? The only way you'd be able to go drag racing would be if you, like, built a full tube chassis go-kart and go drag racing. And, like, you can't even take motors from factory vehicles and put them in there. So it's like, how would you even do it? They're just trying to destroy car racing all in general. They're, they're trying to keep every single engine modification for, I think it's a little bit bigger. Oh, they're trying to keep engine modifications completely gone out there trying to like cold air intakes even mufflers that are still legal still under the decibel rating or whatever it is they're trying to make everything illegal and it's what's the point of that you're these race cars or the, even these street cars like putting a cold air intake on your vehicle is that really affecting the environment that bad it's all you're doing is sucking more air in what's why are they attacking all of these things why I don't get it. So let's go over the comments, see what you guys think. Uh, Indico Dago, I sent letters or petitions to my state reps about this shit. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Jane Creamer, what up? What up, dude? What's going on, Jane? Bears Bueller, I love you, Fluffy. You <laughs> love got, you too, Bueller. You got a super fan. <laughs> uh, John Cobb, diesel sucks if they're illegal anymore, LOL. Pro Charge Mopar, thumbs up. Thumbs up to you, brother. Chance Bryan, it's a bunch of liberal bullshit. It's the world we live in, though. Already did my part with RPM Act. Good. Had a boy. Good man. They just don't want to leave the truck loophole in place like it in the 70s. Yeah. What's the truck loophole? Uh, well, the truck's kind of like the diesel trucks, like the older 90s. Oh, ones. yeah. They yeah. really have any emissions when the right. diesels first came out. Yep. Like it was pretty much a muffler and that was it. Yeah. And then catalytic converter and then right. EGR and then death systems and then just crazy now which i don't get is because a diesel a diesel is more efficient like you can go to like the five nine the common rail the 24 valve common rail they got like 30 miles to the gallon and then you take like a newer six seven right now that has def systems and they have egr systems and they got the dpf filter and they get like 12 miles to the gallon so it's like okay it's burning twice the amount of fuel but it gets better emissions so i I don't know. That just doesn't add up to me. And, and with all these uh, emissions additives, I know Volkswagen has had problems with their emissions. I think uh, Cummins has a lot of problems with their. I'm uh, sorry, not emissions. Um, their DEF systems. Um, I believe Ford was having issues too. If I remember everyone's right. having it. Everyone's. With they're systems. just these DEF systems. They they work, but they break constantly. And no matter what vehicle it's on, if it's if it's a diesel and it's got a DEF system, it's going to break very soon. Jeremy Malcolm, there's no way that it will happen. 
it would kill probably two or three million jobs. Very true. They would kill a lot of jobs. There's so many aftermarket companies that sell aftermarket parts for cars and literally run off that. There's so many aftermarket like shops that literally just install aftermarket parts, wheels, tires, lift kits. They do all that stuff. They do turbo supercharged systems. We got the performance shops that do tuning. They do all that stuff. You got like Summit Racing, Jags, all those big companies that sell aftermarket parts. You also have like the smaller companies that do too. It's just, it, it would kill millions of jobs if they took that away from everyone. Plus again, like this is America, like the car culture is huge here in America, especially modifying your vehicles is gigantic in America. You like racing, drifting, uh, road course events. I mean, there's so much stuff with racing in general that they would destroy and it's just, it's crazy. It blows my mind. It's, it's absolutely, absolute madness. And this can't, it can't, they can't put it through. It's where are you going? Coach Marge Mopar already signed and received notification from both congressmen. Hope they don't start spamming me. Hey, I got the same thing. I got an email back and it's like, it's actually good to see like, Hey, I want the RPM act. Yes. Pro charge mower, haha! Ha, have to run a turbo on your Harbor Freight 20 cc at that. <laughs> Very true. We're gonna have like turbo go karts running around because we won't be able to do anything else. Here's really fluff. What are you doing after the stream? <laughs> Eating Chipotle. <laughs> Eating Chipotle or starving Chipotle. Uh, so yeah, guys, we did this instead of doing a video because we went on vacation last weekend and we just didn't have time. But Whitey update, Twin Turbo Whitey, uh, we will be go racing on the 24th of next month of April, or not April, of March, April. Okay. Yeah, it is April. Is it? Yeah, it's March. Yes. Yeah. So April 24th, we will be going racing at Rock Falls with Whitey. So we have a lot to do to get him ready for that. We will be gutting the interior, taking the trailer hitch off, losing a ton of weight. He needs to go on a huge diet to go fast on that quarter mile drag strip. Um, we need to go through a tune. We need to turn the boost up. We are on eight pounds of boost. We need to be more like 14 PSI with that 93 octane. Um, we might go E85. I think we might do 93 for this race and then go E85 later and turn it up to 18 plus pounds. So we will be close to 14 pounds when we go racing on the 24th. And you guys will see that. We will uh, gut the truck. The next video will probably be gutting the truck. And the video after that will be turning the boost up and going through the tune and cleaning a bunch of stuff up because it does have a little bit of hesitation. But it is pretty fast for what it is. Um, yeah. I'm excited to see what it does down the strip. We also have to have him launching. If he's not launching hard, we probably will be putting a bottle of nitrous on him so he launches off that line so fast because that's everything. <laughs> but bottles are for babies. <laughs> I will put nitrous on him. If that street hit is slow, we are going to be needing that four-wheel drive no matter what, or yeah. we're going to scatter his blurrings all over the ground. <laughs> let's hope not. Whitey hopes together. Yes, let's hope so. Otherwise, if he doesn't, we do have the 5.9. We do have the 5.9 ready to go. We do. Uh, John Cobb, when emissions get squashed or got squashed in the early 70s, it killed muscle cars, but trucks were exempt, so the OEMs made badass factory muscle trucks. Dodge was Little Red Wagon. Oh, I didn't even know that. Thank you. Yeah, interesting. Little yeah. Red Express, yes. So they put all the emission stuff, got rid of the muscle cars, so the OEMs went to the trucks. Yep. Modify them. Huh, I like it. I like the Warlock Rams that came out in the 70s and 80s. Yeah, they're pretty cool. I don't know what they look like, though. I'm going to have to Google seen. it off, yeah, I got this. off the top of my head. So, yeah, guys, pretty much just the RPM Act and the EPA just trying to take, a, take over modifying vehicles, which is just crazy to me because it's like a lot of stuff that they were talking about, though, has been diesel-related and not as much uh, gas-related, but they're talking about just killing it all off. But yeah, those things are sweet. Oh, yeah, really cool. Those Dodge Warlocks, yeah. I'm sorry, Juan. Yeah, I'm just talking. You're talking too. I'm talking. What else? Side so, note: EPA is a big reason you can't buy good appliances. The EPA have EPA standards they have to meet in energy consumption. Very true, because you have everything. EPA touches everything. They have to have their fingers in everything. That's even the auto world, which I don't get. For like, they talk about greenhouse gases and pollution and all that stuff. Is like modifying cars and racing cars is probably like 0.001% of pollution and everything. So why are they coming after us? That's and then what I don't what, get. Well, what I, what I don't get is why are we switching all over to electric vehicles when to 
to get these the lithium ion batteries they have those massive uh, quarry mines to a lithium mine lith or yes thank you lithium yeah. mine um then once they're done with them they just oh we're leaving them it's just a giant hole in the earth why is that allowed but then putting a turbo on a truck is illegal yeah that's the pollution that's the fun turbo in your ram <laughs> <laughs> so yeah guys definitely go check out that rpm act it seems like a lot of you guys have already checked out that rpm act at SEMA, remember go to SEMA.com or just Google RPM Act and look for the SEMA one. Yeah, it's going to be probably out. the top link. There's a lot of stuff that we listen to, a lot of YouTube videos today and throughout the week about the RPM Act mm -hmm. and actual articles we read. And a lot of them are for the RPM Act. And the one thing is, is right now the RPM Act, when it came out in 2000, I think it was 18, don't quote me on that, but uh, it was super big and they were definitely going to pass as a law, but it's kind of fallen down and people are forgetting about it. That's why we we're bringing it up again because we don't want the EPA to say no to race cars. But yeah, people have started bringing it up again. They they are trying to, they're bringing, the EPA is bringing this back up and they want to abolish all racing, any any sort of racing too. Yeah, it would be like super tube chassis would be like the only thing racing. It wouldn't be any factory production car you would not be able to modify. So it would have to be like go-karts. The only thing you'd be able to do is go-karts. They wouldn't be... They would be taking away everything with modifying vehicles. Mm -hmm. But remember, kids, Mexico is only three honks away. <laughs> I mean, we always race in Mexico. True. We True. always race in Mexico. Always. Which is crazy. <laughs> what do you guys think of the giant banner? <laughs> I mean, it's reversed for them, but. Oh, is this? Still. Oh, yeah. Your white idea gets my 5.9 Jeep down on Highway 61 before they make it illegal. Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm down. Let me know. Warlock was a 4x4 version of Little Red Express. I love the Little Reds too. My dream truck is to have one of the two. Yeah, that'd be nice. very cool. Hey, Fluffy. <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, you're a hottie. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Tom. <Tomlin. laughs> Ferris Bueller, stay off my <laughs> Oh, we got some beef going on. <laughs> That's funny. Well, yeah, guys, I thought we'd just make this little stream uh, talking about the RPM Act and what it is doing uh, to save the race cars and to save the aftermarket companies that make superchargers, turbos, tuners, all that stuff. So definitely, again, go to SEMA. Check that out. But as always, guys, keep, keep it boosted, boosted, and we'll see you in the next one. Peace.